Hey everybody, this is Trevor at Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage coming back at you with a brand new 1963 Chevy Impala Hardtop by AMT. This model kit is a 4-in-1 advanced customizing kit. You can build it stock, drag, custom, or advanced custom. It's part of the Retro Deluxe series and uh, special features include many new parts, restored advanced custom panels, and an all-new decal sheet. Now I just got this model kit from my daughter for my 48th birthday and it is really cool. I did have an earlier one which you can see up here just scrolling across for an unboxing but this one is cool because it has all new decals which you can see here. It features wonderful side pipes, a TV, a rabbit mascot, a record player and speakers. It's got these stylized scoops the roll bar, the front bucket seats for racing, and then stock bucket seats with seat belts. We've got all these wonderful tools here. We have a trophy. We also have a TV tray that you can hang out, or sorry, not a TV tray, but a drive-through tray that you can hang out the side of the window. And you also get these amazing custom grills and pieces. And just turning the box over onto this side, it says that you can build this exciting advanced custom in many different versions. And these are the uh, really ultra advanced customizing version. And I haven't seen this actually built in uh, model kit form or put on YouTube in any video. So I want to be the first one to do that. Uh, look at how cool this is. I do believe this was designed by Gene Winfield. And uh, these are the other special features. You get these cool SS wheels and the mag wheels as well and reversible Firestone tires. On the back of the box we also get a full-on parts overview. There's the body, the chassis, and the hood and all the great components that are in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the shrink wrap and then show you what's in there. That's how new this kit is. I Like I said, I just got it. All right, so the shrink wrap is off, and now let's just pull this up here. Okay, moving that out of the way. So look at the chrome we got in here. There's a lot of pieces. And uh, then we've got our clear glass. AMT has put everything in a bag, which is really nice. There's those reversible Firestone tires. White walls on the inside or on the outside. There's our body interior and the underpan all in the bag. And then we've got the race part. We even have the convertible top. There's the hood. Now, if you look at my other review of this model kit, there was quite a few things missing. The custom hood and the firewall were all missing from that original kit. Or, well, the earlier kit that I did. The original original has these, but you know what I'm saying. The one from RC2. This is the one from Round 2. But there's that cool back end. That was included in the one from Round 2. But, uh, or sorry, RC2. And now I'm getting confused. But it was missing from, yeah, the earlier one. Anyway, there's a metal axle. Just one. Oh, that's right, because it's got the pins in front. There's our instruction sheet. This one looks more like the RC2 one. And then there's our decals at the bottom. So I'll take a look at those in a minute, but let's check out that instruction sheet. Here we are with the 1963 Impala instruction sheets, and there's that nice rear three-quarter view of the original 63 Impala. It says, before you begin to assemble your model, study the instructions carefully. I cannot stress that more than enough. No, I'm just kidding. But um, no, actually, you should be using these instructions for more than just putting your paint on or ripping up or, uh, you know, whatever you do with them or totally ignoring them. You should actually take a look at them because that's where the fun is at. Down here on the instructions, we get the images of the symbols that are going to show up in the instruction sheet, like this one. The assembly sequence, number two, part number 54, painted this color, which are these colors down here. A nice paint chart from AMT. And then we've got the licensing here from General Motors, as well as Firestone. And, of course, we need all the other symbols, so that's always good as well. Our first panel shows our engine going together. This is the Chevrolet 409 that you heard the Beach Boys sing about. We've got a right and left hand side engine block which includes the water pump up front 
the oil pan underneath and the transmission. Then we have the intake manifold and the cylinder heads and the carburetor all molded as one piece, potentially the distributor back here as well. Then our valve covers plug in nice and easy and our exhaust manifolds go in on the sides up here as well. Then in the front we've got our fan belt with the pulley and the alternator and our fan there and the air cleaner just drops straight on. In panel two, you get a choice of your wheels and tires. So here we have our little backing clip and the Firestone, which you can put either on the black wall facing out or the white wall facing out. There's our stock wheel that just gets plugged in through that hole. Or you get these wonderful custom mag wheels with the little knockoffs. And you do the same in the rear as well. Panel three shows our interior. And here you get a choice of either stock, drag, or custom. So let's start with the stock interior first. You get these wonderful bucket seats that plug into the floor. There are some holes in the floor pan. You might have to enlarge them a little bit just to get the pins to fit in, but that's just wonderful. There you've got your two seat belts gluing down. You got your plated shift lever going into the console, your steering wheel and column as one piece, and that goes into the dashboard. And here we have our drag and custom dashboard. And you'll notice that there are a lot of decals which go on here, which is a nice addition. Makes it a little easier than painting all this in with a brush. There's our dashboard again. And you've got your choice of either the stock steering wheel or the drag steering wheel, custom steering wheel, I guess. And uh, there's our dashboard going down into the interior bucket. Again, it's the same bucket, so those holes might need to be open. There's the shifter lever going in. Here we've got these wonderful bucket seats, which are very much like the 64 Impala bucket seats, with the custom bottoms, the backrests, and the headrests. And then if you want to do the race car version, you've got the four-point harness here, and add in your seat belts down below. If we look over here for racing, you also have the roll bar going in, they use the custom seats here, but they've removed the headrests. And this we have a fire extinguisher dropping onto that center console. Panel 4 is really awesome. I just love all the accessories that AMT includes with the model kit. Here we have a two-piece cross flag Chevy style trophy, which of course is also for the winner. There's our speakers for our stereo system, which is basically a record player. And the detail on this is really cool. I'll show you the parts in a minute. And there's a top that goes on. This is the drive through tray. And then we've got a two-piece television set, a real 60s one. And we've got the nice rabbit as well. And then all our tools. You get a couple of the lead paddles for doing the bodywork. You got a little ball-peen hammer, a screwdriver, uh, adjustable wrench. And then you've got your pliers. And then here you've got a couple of boxed end wrenches. Actually, they're not boxed end, they're open end. Now I've got a question for everybody. So please write it down in the comments below. Where have you used these accessories? Have you actually used them inside on the Chevy at all? Or did you use them for something else? Now I have a, the TV set and the record player and the speakers that I put into a KISS van that I made. It wasn't the Chevy KISS van, it was a Dodge one and I printed up my own decals and I actually bought some KISS decals that were a reprint of them. But that's where I use mine. And I don't think in the old kit that I have it had the TV tray, so that'll be really cool to put somewhere else. Sorry, drive through tray. I keep saying TV tray. Maybe because uh, back in the day you had TV dinners. So let me know where you put those in the comments down below. Panel 5 shows our chassis being put together. Now there is one thing about this kit. You could make it with an opening hood, or you could actually just glue the hood down, and they give you this bottom part of the motor to put in. And uh, that, that's interesting, because I think you could build this as a curbside or a promo, or even a slot car if you wanted. But that engine plug would go in there just to cover up so you didn't need to build the engine. Or you could actually just display the engine on its own and have that in there and with the hood closed. Now the back wheels, I forgot to mention earlier, they go on the metal axle. And the front wheels have plastic pins that poke in through the back. So just be careful when you're doing all this that you don't accidentally glue the axle into the wheel. And accidentally glue the wheel into the inner apron so that this thing can't turn in the front. 
Now here we have the body in panel 6 going all together. So there's the body shell itself. You get the one-piece windows, which were quite popular back in the day. Easy way to build. But if you want to build this more professionally, just cut these off here and back here, that bridge, clear plastic bridge, and you'll have more accurate looking glass. This was one component that was missing out of the RC2 kit, which I'm glad has made a comeback because it's an important piece. This, of course, is the firewall with the brake master cylinder going on there. And can you believe they ran this kit earlier with that missing? Uh, not this kit, but the RC2 one. Anyway, there's our interior bucket going up inside. And you got your radiator and the battery. And this actually shows the correct way that the battery goes in up on this side of the front radiator support. Panel 7 shows the final assembly for the stock version of this kit. And here we have the rear bumper going up in place. Now there are some pegs that are going to go through these holes, so just watch for those. Just like in the front right here, this all gets trapped in together. And then our hood gently lays on the top of the car. And then back here, it's got a decal which goes in for the Chevy emblem. And it's showing you here to uh, paint these parts and all that kind of great stuff. And there's our license plate going there as well. Oh, it says to sandpaper off the 1963, the raised letters in the bumper, so that you can put on the nice decal afterwards. Panel 7 shows the custom going together. Now, this is just the regular custom, not the advanced one, but it still is very awesome. I mean, just look at how many parts and components you get here. You get this type of grill here with the headlights. I'll just call this the flat grill. And then you could also put in the rounded grill. This is sort of like a Lincoln Continental up front here. And you get uh, quad headlights on there as well as the little bars in between. Really cool stuff. And then here you also get this rolled pan which drops into place with a couple of little... Uh, I'm not sure what these are. Parking lights or something? It would be kind of nice if AMT wrote on here what these parts are. But there's your scoops going into the center of the hood. There's a nice stripe decal that goes along there as well as on the sides. And then we get the uh, side skirts going in place with these mufflers and uh, lake pipes off the back. Rolled pan in the back with bumperettes. Oh, that's what they are, bumperettes. But again, the three little spotlights. Oh, that's pretty cool. So let's just move along and see the drag racing version. Now, like the box said, you could build this one of four ways. So this would be way number three, the drag racing version. You have to build this on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Anyway, <laughs> so there's the hood scoop going on up front, the stock grill. Now, this has got headlamps, but I do believe these are blanks. We'll have to look as we go along here, but they would blank out the headlights in there, which, of course, the headlight assembly is heavy. So by blanking these over with cardboard and removing the headlights, the real drag racer guy would cut down a lot of weight in there. There again, we get our lake pipes going on. This is the race style fuel cap, which is a quick release kind of deal. So you can get gas in there really quickly. And then our stock rear bumper would glue into place. And here's our decal placement, number 45, with those cross flags in there and uh, the Chevrolet garage that they're using. So now let's take a look at our advanced custom. Here we have the instruction sheet for our advanced custom. And what AMT is lacking in the engine bay, it is definitely made up in this. So here we get an extra hood that slopes asymmetrically in the front. Asymmetrical. And uh, there's our hood scoop going on, which would go asymmetrically off to the side. You get a choice of either bar type grill or cross hatch. And then you get the three headlight kind of things going on here. And those who go in on the crosshatch version. And then you get the crosshatch grill growing, going, not growing, going down below. And then the roof scoop with the little grills inside. And then an optional rear scoop you can put on. And the offset panel here for asymmetrical styling. And then you get that rear bumper in there, which glues right over the top. And here it's either exhaust pipes, three of them, or tail lamps. That's the clear red going through. And then you get the wonderful inserts, your choice of either the grill style or this sort of bar style. Oh, same with this. This is the bar style that would pop in there to match this one. So it's all based on how you want to see your custom.
Here we've got the body of our 1963 Chevy Impala. Now there's quite a bit to remove from here, like this angled cross brace and the fenders, and the little thing that says remove right beside our window pillar up front. There's quite a bit of flash on here. Flash! Ah! Oh, dun dun dun! Dun 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 dun! <laughs> there's removal points on the side of the body. Actually, there's quite a few on here. And of course, we always have to deal with flush. Ah, oh, dun dun dun. And you know what? I've been uh, looking at Facebook comments and stuff, and I've been seeing a lot of people saying AMT kits are horrible, and we have to pay all this money for flush. Ah, oh, dun dun dun. Diddle dun 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 dun. But uh, keep in mind that these molds here for this thing have been around since 1963. So expect some flash. Uh, but overall, I mean, it's not bad because there we got our Chevrolet logo. Look at how nice and crisp all this is in here. The detail is excellent on here. You just got to uh, use your block sander to get rid of the flash. Ah, uh, and um, there's the emblems there, the gas filler door the proper GM handles, the Chevrolet logo off the side here, and then the little bars up front that you got in 63. The radiator up front here is nice. There's little holes for the battery and the horns. Again, it's not bad. Like, I can get it done. <laughs> I just use my hobby knife and sandpaper. Be careful. The cowl here has the vents going on it, as well as the windshield wipers. Very proper for 63. There's the stamp in the bottom from AMT, sort of pressed on tampo type thing. There's quite a bit of this channel run in here. Now that's from the original kit, so there's not much you can do about it. You could use your Dremel and just grind this down. It'll be a bit rough on the inside if you really want to bother, but I do believe that a lot of this stuff is hidden. Up here, the, these little blobbies are actually the uh, sun visors, so you don't really want to remove them. A couple of mold marks back in here, but again, I don't think they interfere with anything. There's our interior bucket. I just want to, uh, we'll look at that more in a minute, but I want to show you, like, this clips on nicely onto those pegs. All that blobby stuff doesn't really affect inside here, so you should be okay. And then our undercarriage, our chassis, will fit into the holes in the back on these pegs. Anyway, trust me. <laughs> and that's how it would go down. So again, really, you, you just need to clear up maybe back here in this wheel well on the inside and definitely flatten out those so that the body fits tighter together. Uh, yeah, overall, it, it's not too bad. I don't think anything would really interfere. So let's just take a look at the interior bucket and the chassis. Here's our interior tub, and take a look at the awesome beauty of this piece. This is so amazing! <laughs> okay, get a religious experience going on there. Okay, there's our uh, back bench seat with the Chevrolet logo molded in place. Or maybe that was... A, no, it's a, it says SS on there. Super Sport. The uh, interior side panels have a nice little pattern on there, even though this isn't quite as crisp as it could be if you had these sides molded as flat separate panels. But keep in mind this molding comes from 1963, so I think it's really good. Mold marks back here, number 16 hobby blade, you guys know the drill if you've seen all my videos. These little holes are designed for the bucket seats to pop into. You might want to enlarge them with the drill. Um, just to make them pop in there easier. We've got the automatic transmission style pedals here, or perhaps they're standard. Yeah, they must be, because that would be your clutch right there. And uh, there's your brake pedal. Again, there's a mold mark right beside the uh, rubber mat, which is always a bit of a pain to try to get through. And then up top we've got Flash! Ah! But overall, like I said, this should go together in fit into the kit really nicely. And here we have the chassis pan, which again is quite a bit rough in here. We've got the mold marks sitting there and there and there and there, which you'll have to remove with your number 16 hobby blade. Again, we got flash going on quite a bit compared to our 
do believe my earlier version of this kit, but then again, this is later. Here's something that has been improved. The original holes that were in the uh, back trunk compartment, because remember the gas tank is here. This is the trunk here. So this would have notches in there for the screws to go through. Well, I do believe that round two has plugged them and actually made this a lot smoother in here. Even though it's still a bit rough, as you can see, you can use your sandpaper and just smooth it out. So that's a nice little trick on there. Now, the rear axles actually just go through in a stock position on this. They're not uh, dropped or lowered like the 64 Impala with the two holes. But you could easily put two mounting holes in here if you wanted, I think. I'm not too sure on the front, though. Because according to how the engine block looks, I think you're kind of stuck in there. Although it did have the pins that mounted from the back, so again, I'm not sure. You'll need your number 16 hobby blade just to get rid of the flash going in the wheel arches in there. And there's a sink mark right here. That's where the engine mounts. Yep. So, uh, you know, just take your time with this. Be a bit careful. And it should uh, give you good representation of the under chassis of the Chevy. Now the next plastic bag I opened actually had three parts trees in it, and here they are. So this is of course the custom end. We've also got our engine block here, and then we've got our stock hood and the custom rear back end. These look like plastic axles. That's interesting. Then we've got the uh, side spears as well as the rear rolled pan. And then here we've got all our accessories and the drag racing cage and the scoops and a bunch of cool things. That's a record player. Seat belts, the TV tray as well. The diner tray. drive through tray. Oh, goodness. Not my day for tray. Okay, let's take a look at these things up close. So there we go. Now, one thing I noticed is there's a lot of little black dots and stuff in here, which is kind of odd. Okay, there's our engine. Look at that nice detail on there. There's the uh, valve covers. Or, sorry, the cylinder heads. They have holes in them because the valve covers also have holes. This is almost like, uh, yeah, it is. It's it's plugged together on all the little pins. That's what's going on. So it's almost like a snap together in a weird way. But again, the detail is quite nice, even though the engine is quite simplistic, actually. There's that front rolled pan. We've been waiting 30 years for this to be back in the kit. What is this? Just flash or something? That's an interesting component. There's this off-centered thing again. Not quite sure what it is. Um, I guess I gotta see what it is on the car. Maybe it's something on the rear window just to make it look a little, you know, asymmetrical or something. But overall, I do like the detailing on this part. It's quite nice. Or, sorry, not part, but uh, runner. Now, here's all the great accessories. Now, if you notice on the back side, there's a lot of mold marks. Those will all have to be removed with your number 16 hobby blade and hobby files. But if we turn it over, you've got that wonderful TV set right in there. Look at the TV, watch TV. There's the back end, the uh, tailpipe extensions, and we've got the padded roll bar up in here. There's our white rabbit. One pill makes you bigger. Anyway, there's our racing steering wheel. And here's our record player. This thing's really cool quite big up front and then got the record player in the back a real classic i wonder does it say what record player this is now i'm going down a rabbit hole it just says amt on there oops so i'm not quite sure what record player that would have really been in the real world but it's a amt record player so that's always good i think this is just flash again yeah there's our harness seat belt and our cross flag trophy. So again, lots of really cool components in there. And finally, we've got our stock hood. There's those little black dots I'm I'm talking about. It's that mold release agent. So always remember soap and water on these parts. Get rid of that mold release agent and it'll be really good. Again, a nice kit, nicely detailed. Flash on this part is not too bad. But I don't know, round two, I mean, Ah, it, this just seems like quite a dirty mold for round two. A little bit disappointed in that part of it. But, you know, like I said, with cleanup and, uh, 
getting rid of the mold marks, it should turn out quite nice. It's going to require a little bit of extra effort on here, but um, once you get it all cleaned up, it will look amazing. Amazing! The next bag that I opened included these parts. So here we've got our stock bucket seats, as well as the custom bucket seats. We've got our dashboard and stock steering wheel. And there is an option where you could actually saw the roof off and use this convertible boot on there. Um, one of these days I'm going to show you guys how to cut a roof off the proper way, and you'll thank me for it. <laughs> but right now, we're going to review this kit some more. This is that engine plug I was talking about, and it's really well done, actually. And as you can see, it would just drop in a couple little mounting holes in there. That is, if you don't want to build your Chevy engine and you want to display it on, you know, off to the side or something, you just use that plug instead. Now, this is the parts tree I've been waiting for for a long, long time. This is the one that includes the dashboard, because like I said, the older RC2 version, which is up in that corner from before, it didn't have the dashboard. Sorry, the firewall. And, uh, yeah, the firewall. <laughs> and there's our radiator, our horns, our master brake cylinder, which pops into there, and the GM battery. And this is the other part that wasn't around for a long time. This, of course, is that asymmetrical hood slopes down in front. And again, this is a piece that I don't know why RC2 didn't include that, because they did include the back part. So again, like I said, really strange, but this came out really nice. And you can see that it hasn't been around for a long time, just by how crisp that is underneath, compared with the rest of the items in the kit. And again, this is really crisp as well on the firewall. So again, excellent work. I really like the seats on here too. They're nicely done, but again, there's a lot of this mold release agent on here, which easily soap and water will take it off. So just remember to scrub down your model before you begin. There's that dashboard, really beautifully done. You know, AMT did make some good stuff back in the day, and uh, this is a living example of it. And then the engine pan. So let's take a look at the rest of the components. Hey, comic book fans, this is your old pal, Stan the Man Lee. Just wondering if you're a friend of old Marvel, or as I like to call it, Foom. Anyway, I don't know what's making me say that. But uh, here's the chrome parts tree for our 63 Impala. And we actually get two chrome parts trees, and these have a lot of chrome on them. So there's our uh, stock front and rear bumper which are really nice. You can see just how excellent they are. There's the front custom pans. We've also got these nice daisy style wheels, I believe they were called, and our custom, or sorry, our stock Super Sport wheels. So there we also have the inserts and our tools and many other cool parts. Let's take a look at this closer up. There we've got our grill. Look at that, look at just how nice that is. Don't you want this on your shelf? Yes, you do. Now, there is actually no flash on the chrome, so that's a good, good sign from round two. And there's those nice Super Sport wheels. You turn these over, you got your front wheels. They've got the bigger holes in them for those pins. And then the back mounting plates, and these would go straight through. There, there's the same on the daisy wheels right there. Sorry for the stutter. <laughs> So there we go, and we've got the nice grills. This is, again, like the 63 Lincoln. And uh, that one, that's just your wire mesh grill again. There's the knockoffs in there, side pipes, the gas filler, the, well, that's more knockoffs again. The bumperettes, those would be your exhaust pipes. Again, really cool stuff. Let's take a look at that other chrome tree, the shorter one. There we go. I wonder if these are actually the pegs that the wheels go on. That's interesting. Yep, they would fit together. So there you go, friends of old Marvel. There's all those tools, like I was saying before, you've got your wrenches, pliers, your adjustable spanner. <laughs> that was just for you, Peter. Adjustable spanner. There's a screwdriver, the ball peen hammer, and the lead paddles for when you were leading up the front of your car back in the day before the advent of Bondo. And then there's the bar-style grill ends, 
and the mesh style grills and then there's the bar style grill inserts so again really cool it's so nice to get all this chrome reunited in this model kit once again and there you go here we have our glass and red transparent parts the red transparent parts are of course for our asymmetrical rear bumper so here you get one tail light on its own and then the three grouped in for the opposite side there we've got our clear lenses for the front little whatever they were parking lamps or whatever and then we've got our headlights as well and here we have our front and rear windows and like i was saying you can easily cut them off here and here just to make this look more like proper glass there's not too much i can show you in the ca camera here other than that these are bullets so again very nicely done these are all in the bag so no scratches now here we have our tires and what's interesting about them is you've got the white wall here that's been tampo printed on and if you turn it over you've got the black wall and you can see where it says firestone up in here so again really nicely done these tires are actually new i thought they were just remade old ones so i'm just going to clear these three out of the way this is the firestone tire that came in the original 63 impala now i think i did spin this one down a little to clean it up as i you can notice here there is no writing on here but these are black wall on both sides now this one has firestone right in there so let's compare to firestone to firestone you can see that the outer ridge is taller on the newer ones wait let's just make sure no it's the same height just looks a little taller i do believe this ring has been moved down a little and the firestone lettering is a bit different there is more lettering down here at the bottom of the tire as compared to just a little dot or something on this one now look at the treads see the difference in the tread this one has more of a pattern to it and this is just lines that go and wrap around the outside so I do believe that round two has really put in a good effort into revitalizing brand new Firestone tires as compared to the old ones. But again, it's hard to say which one is actually more accurate. Now, I know this one, the original, has been in every model car kit that AMT has made, basically from the 30s model cars up into the mid-early 60s. Whereas this one is, like I said, new. So this original tire may have covered more models and been more accurate back in the day for those earlier kits like the 32 Fords, but might not quite be the same in the 60s like this one is. Here's the moment you've been waiting for. Time to reveal our decal sheet. And here it is. Look at how wonderful this is. You get the number 45 in the black drop shadow. There's our crossed flags for the sides. Look at the cool striping you get for the car. These are for the sides again. You get the nice moon eyes eyes, the super sport little uh, slash, um, what do you call it? <laughs> and uh, here you get three different uh, screens for your TV, which is really neat. There's the hooker headers decal, the sponsorship decal, champion firestone, Pennzoil, auto light. You get uh, four license plates on here. Actually, they're there's three because these are repeat but if you want to check out how to make your own license plates don't forget to see this link right here it's really cool you get the big imp in here impella you also get the impella uh, emblems on there which is really nice and the super sport emblems as well as the chevy hood emblems for the stock version and the super sport stuff on the side so again a lot of really uh, good effort went into this decal sheet and like I said, this is a beautiful work of art. Well, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing video of the 63 Chevy Impala 4-in-1 kit from AMT under the Round 2 banner. Go Round 2. You're doing a wonderful job. Even though there's flash. Ah! Anyway, I want to thank my daughters for giving me this great model kit for my birthday. And I know mom helped out too because mom's got the money <laughs> so uh yeah i'd like to thank you all again for this wonderful model i didn't get to show you this end of the box which is cool shows you this nice mint green 63 impala just for reference i'm gonna have fun building this i'm gonna make a video coming up sometime soon which you can check out here once it all gets going 
uh, which will be, of course, the build of this 63 Impella, as well as the build of, where did I put it? I'm gonna put it back over here. <laughs> bear with me, people, bear with me, bear with my unprofessionalness. I'm also gonna build this one at the same time I'm building the new one, because uh, the old one, I can pretty much only build stock, but of course the new one has got all the pieces in it to build as the foreign one. So that'll be a really fun one. Don't forget to check out the model kits that I have for sale that you can buy from me and I can ship to where you live right now at www.monster-hobbies.ca. You won't be disappointed. I've got a good selection. And uh, yeah, a lot of people uh, like me. <laughs> anyway, until next time, everybody, happy model building and we'll see you in the next video.